Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today. Hope that you'll take time to share this out on your social media platforms. It's very important that these words get out, especially in light of the conditions in our world and all that is taking place that is pointing like the forefinger of Almighty God to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. There are many people that would write off the rapture or uh, try to displace it or say it's not going to happen or that it is some kind of escapism. But the Bible is very clear that Jesus could come at any moment. No man knows the day nor the hour. Uh, but it is important for us to live our lives in such a way that we're ready for the coming of the Lord. And there are certain signs at, that the Scripture lets us know very clearly that are happening in our world right now. There is no doubt about it biblical signs that can help us to see the indication of the seasons that we're in. We don't know the day, but we can know the season. And I can assure you one of the seasons that we're in is a time that we're dealing with Israel and the world is, which has always been as the epicenter of Bible prophecy. All things surround that tiny nation of Israel. And I've had the question asked many times, what is it that constitutes the last days as the Bible speaks to us? Uh, what is it that shows us that we are living in that time period uh, with the imminent return of Jesus Christ that is upon us? Well, for me, and I believe that the Bible bears this out, that it was the birth of the modern state of Israel in uh, May 14, 1948, that started God's end-time clock of Bible prophecy. As you look at what took place there as a nation was born in a day, according to the Scripture, that since that time, that Jerusalem, no doubt, has become a continual and increasing, uh, as the book of Zechariah says, burdensome stone. Well, we are watching as the United States and the world is dealing with Israel in this current war in Gaza. And over the past several weeks, we've been talking a little bit about it. New developments that have occurred just within the past few days from this article, Netanyahu cancels trip to Washington after U.S. fails to veto the anti-Israel U.N. resolution. According to this article, the resolution purposefully excluded the need for a ceasefire agreement to include the release of Israeli hostages, uh, not to mention the fact that there are American hostages that are still there. The United States neglected to use its veto power to block the resolution, which was backed by Russia and China, a move Netanyahu underscored represents an abandoning of support. The article goes on to say, regrettably, the United States did not veto this new resolution, which calls for the ceasefire that is not contingent upon the release of hostages. Netanyahu continued and said, quote, this constitutes a clear departure from the consistent United States position in the Security Council since the beginning of the war. He says today's resolution gives Hamas hope that international pressure will force Israel to accept a ceasefire without the release of our hostages, thus harming both the war effort and the effort to release the hostages. The article continues uh, with more information that I would encourage you to be able to go online. There are many articles that are dealing with this, and certainly whenever the United States deals in um, either some kind of so-called neutral position or negative against the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, there are consequences that follow. I don't have control of that. God is the one who's in control of that. And when the United States leadership has ever in our history uh, dealt with Israel in a negative way, then we've seen those consequences take place. I will tell you in the beginning of uh, President Bush, the first President Bush, George H.W. Bush, his Secretary of State for the first time went to the UN and uh, for the first time in United States history and voted against Israel. It was within the next 24 hours that uh, disastrous hurricanes began to hit up the eastern, uh, eastern seaboard and the coast, even going into Kennebuckport, Maine, where President Bush had his home. This is very important because in the time we're in right now, Israel needs to feel the support, and I believe it has the support, but certainly not of the national media and other sources. This is a time in Israel when they are now literally reading the book of Esther during Purim, during this particular season, time of year. And with that story is the ancient story of how that Haman literally came against the Jewish people, ready to slaughter them. And one woman stood up 
uh, and calling the nation to fasting and prayer. According to uh, commentaries, some 22,000 Jews got together in a time of fasting and prayer for those days. And as a result of that, the entirety of it was turned around. That ancient spirit of Haman is in the heart and mind and the very spirit of this terrorist organization called Hamas. The Bible says this, my friends, that the spirit of, of uh, annihilating the Jewish people will not go away, but Psalm 121 and 4 says this, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither, shall neither sleep nor slumber. He goes on to say, and hear this word today from Jeremiah as we come to a close. Jeremiah 31, 35, and 36 says this, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances, listen to this, if those, the sun, moon, and stars, if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. In other words, the sun, moon, and stars are not going away until God calls them into order uh, later. But now he is watching over Israel and as sure as the sun, moon, and stars are continuing to orbit, are continuing to move in the galaxies, you can rest assured that the nation of Israel will continue to be God's chosen people. It's important for us to support. It's important for us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, just like the Bible says. And then, with all these things occurring, make sure that you're ready for the next great event on the calendar of God. It is the rapture of the church, a signless event that could occur at any moment. It's not conjecture. It's not trying to hype it up. It is simply the truth. Jesus Christ is surely coming again. Till the next time, remember that fact that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Thank you.